live from our studio in Edison, New Jersey, it's Jersey's Talking with Lee Leonard. Tonight, Lee's guests are political analyst Jim McQueenie, sports writers Chris Thorne and Joseph Spratt, concert pianist Makiko Hirata, and pilot and author John Cronin. Welcome home, New Jersey. That small young woman at that big piano is uh, currently visiting us here in New Jersey, and we're lucky to have her because she'll be working across the river. Makiko Hirata is a native of Japan. She began her piano studies at the ripe old age of three. She has performed throughout the world, North and South America, Japan, Europe, and next Monday night, she'll be performing at the Wild Recital Hall at Carnegie Hall in New York, and that will be your debut at Carnegie Hall? Yes. Are you nervous? Um, I'm excited. <laughs> What's the difference between um, well, nervous is like a negative energy, and I guess exciting is good. Do you get butterflies before you perform? Um, yeah, well, I do. That's definitely. what we do. Yeah. How do you handle that? Um, deep I breath? Know, <laughs> deep breath, um, meditation, um, trying to find people that I know in the audience, you know, trying to smile at them. <laughs> now, when you started to take lessons at, at, at the age, that's not uncommon. Young children take music no, lessons no. all over the world. Yeah. But at what point did you or your parents or your teacher say, ooh, ooh wait a minute, <laughs> this, young, this girl has some, some promise. Maybe she could uh, be a musician. Uh, I, I don't know, actually. I started, I, I started playing the piano when I was two and a half. My parents had a piano old upright in the house, and I started picking out tunes there. And, um, With no lessons? No lessons. Okay. And um, so I must have liked it from the very beginning. <laughs> Was there any point uh, over the years when you were a teenager especially that uh, you thought maybe of going into popular music as opposed to classical? Uh, no, actually, never. <laughs> I, no. Do you no. listen to popular music? Not very much. I, I, I don't mind them. I, I like them. Yeah. But I, I, I don't. Who, when you were, again, when you were growing up and you mm -hmm. were beginning now to think about a professional career or making a life in, in music, who did you listen to that really impressed you, that you said to yourself, yes, one day, not that you want to play that way, but mm. one day I can play that well? Uh, Midori, she's the prodigy violinist. Yeah. Um, I, I watched her when I was um, about 10. She was making her Carnegie Hall debut at age 13 or something. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to be like her. <laughs> Have you met her? No. Well, I actually met her once after the concert and got her autograph and everything. But and what's it like at your age? You're still a very young woman. You're in your early 20s. You, you travel all over the world. Yeah. Uh, how, how much traveling do you do? How much time do you spend? Well, where is home? Where is home? That's a good now, question. Yeah. <laughs> My family is in Japan. Yeah. But uh, I've lived in the East Coast area here for about nine years now. Um, it's, it's very hard to say. It's very hard to it, say. Do you visit with your parents often? Oh, do you once, see them much? Once a year, maybe, maybe not. That's not a lot. No, it's very far away. <laughs> do they ever cut, travel to see you play? Yeah, my mom's here today. She's here me. today? Yeah, oh, she flew in yesterday. Not going to miss Carnegie Hall, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> What's, what, what will be the, the first uh, number you'll play in your concert? Uh, Rabel Memoirs. That's a, a, a collection of five works. Um, very impressionistic work. Very beautiful. Um, it starts with Night Moth and Sad Birds, um, Boat on the Ocean. It's very describatory of all the. And you're also going to, uh, let's say, you're going to play uh, some Chopin? No, actually, I, I changed my mind about that oh, after you, oh, the flyers yeah. were printed. So this we can throw away now, huh? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. no, no, I'm going to play. Um, I'm continuing the program with the Prokofiev Fourth Sonata, yeah. which is actually not played very often, but it's a great piece of work. And, uh, and then intermission. I'm going to play some Bach, and then uh, I'm going to end with a, a Catalan composer by the name of Monpo, who is not very well known. Yeah, I've never heard. I've, I've heard of the others, but never mm -hmm. of him. Uh, he was actually alive until about 10 years ago, um, and he's now starting to be recognized 
<laughs> really nice. Um, he's, I think he's one of the most underrated composer. He's, I like him a lot. Do you play with the big symphony orchestras? I do. I do you do. like that? Oh, yeah. Is, is, is that more fun to hear all of that coming, surrounding you, than just being by yourself and playing? Well, it's a, it's a different feeling, you know? I mean, when you're playing by yourself, you're surrounded by the sound that you make yourself. You're, you're, you're creating a world. Uh, um, as to when you're playing with other people, n not not just with orchestras, but with chamber music, other yeah. instrumentalists, um, you're actually communicating with other people, and that that's a totally different thing. Yeah. I can't compare. Well, see, I, I've always been. Uh, in, I had the opportunity once to stand during a rehearsal right in front, almost next to the conductor when a full symphony orchestra was playing, and you you just have never heard anything like that <laughs> anywhere else. And I was wondering, what is it like to play with that? Oh, it's, uh, it's great. <laughs> After every performance, solo or, you know, yeah. other, I, I always feel like I just love people. I, I, it's, it's a great feeling. <laughs> Do you ever goof up? Goof up. Uh, During a performance, make a mistake that... Oh, uh, many times. <laughs> I mean, but a bad mistake that... Uh, I've, did I've, you ever stop and say, I'm going to start this again? Uh, yeah, I've done that a couple of times. That's, that's a really bad, bad moment. But do you get up and say to the audience, I'm going to do this again? Or no, no, no. Oh, no, <laughs> no you, just, you just try to cover it up and you know, make it unnoticeable as possible. Okay, now Makiko Hirata will be uh, performing Monday, December 14th at 8 o'clock at the Wild Hall in Carnegie Hall. And uh, if you would like to go and see her, you can call 212-247-7800 and uh, get some ticket reservations. That'd I hope there are some left uh, now that I've said that. <laughs> okay. Makiko, thank you so much thank for coming you. by and being with us. We're going to take another little break.